Well, hi there. Um, trying a little something new this morning as I kind of reorient from the desktop sermon to the office sermon. Um, the lighting evidently has not been great, so I'm working on uh, new lighting so that our sound and audio is a little bit better. But we continue a series called The Blessing. And I'm hearing back from a lot of people just how much God is using this to encourage them. And I hope it's an encouragement to you. We've said a couple of things um, overlaying Ephesians 1 with the narrative in Genesis. In Ephesians 1 and 2, um, we've said uh, that every spiritual blessing is in Christ Jesus. And that God uh, wants you to open your eyes so that you come to this realization that you were designed to thought rhyme with God, to be his poem. When God speaks, then you respond. God writes one line of the poem, you write the next line through your obedience. And so then we've gone back and looked at Abraham. So the first thing we said is, is that um, God is determined to bless you. And then the second thing we said, um, by using the narrative in Genesis to see um, who Abraham is and all that God has done in his life. The second thing we said was that God is determined to bless you in spite of you. He's going to bless you anyway, in spite of your mistakes. He's determined to bless you. So he picks Abraham, and in spite of Abraham's mistake, God still continues to bless Abraham. Now, today we're going to talk about how the every spiritual blessing is in Christ Jesus, is always and has always been, has always been in Christ Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, it says, Praise be to God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has, past tense, has blessed us in the heavenly realms, the reality of heaven. That there are two realities. There's this physical reality that we experience, and then there's a heavenly reality. But they're both real. He has, past tense, blessed us in the heavenly reality, the unseen reality, with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight. He chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world. Jesus has always been the Christ. He's eternal. And all of the blessings that he has for us are real in a different reality. Not this physical reality, although they can be manifested and experienced here. But they await us, and we enter into them through obedience. So the first thing we want to look at in this Genesis chapter 14. And in Genesis chapter 14, Abraham has gone to uh, the land that God has promised him. He took uh, his nephew Lot and uh, all the men and their possessions, and he's grown in his possessions through the blessing of Pharaoh and um, experiences, he's just continued to prosper. But there is uh, the king of Sodom who comes, um, and the king of Kedlamar wages war against the king of Sodom. Well, Lot and his family are living in Sodom. And the king of Kedlamar comes in and defeats and takes everything people, possessions wealth, riches. And so Abram's nephew, Lot, has been taken captive. This is where we are in Genesis 14. And so in verse 13, a man escapes and he reports to Abraham that um, Lot's been basically taken uh, prisoner. So Abraham um, gets 318 trained men from his household and he divides them in the night, and they go and they attack this king of Kedalmar. And he recovers all the goods that he brought back with his relative. He, he brings back his relative Lot and the possessions and all the women and other people. So after Abraham returns from defeating the king of Kedalmar and those kings allied with 
the king of Kedalmar, the king of Sodom, who had been defeated, comes out to meet Abraham in the valley of Sheva, which we know as the Kidron Valley. This is the valley where Jesus would pass through coming from the Temple Mount uh, to the Mount of Olives. It's also known as the King's Valley. Then verse 18 of chapter 14, it says, Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High. And he blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram God, by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abram gave a tenth of everything. The king of Sodom said to Abram, Okay, so now the king of Sodom who lost, so Abraham goes and defeats uh, the, the other king. Um, Sodom, king of Sodom had lost, and that's why Lot had gotten taken, because Lot was living in Sodom. Now the king of Sodom says to Abram, Give me the people, and you can keep the goods for yourself. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, and he raises his hand, and he says, With raised hand I've sworn an oath to the Lord God Most High, Creator God that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or the strap of your sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abram rich. I will accept nothing but what my men have eaten and shared the belongings with my men who went with me and let them have their share. Okay. Adam goes in the fog of war. And um, this happens to all of us, right? So, circumstances happen. Uh, life presents us a, a complexity, a difficulty. And it's very easy during um, the fog of war to get our eyes off of the truth or the reality. So, battles can fog our vision, but victory and blessing come from God. So, Abraham comes back from the battle, the king of Sodom comes out and says, look, you can have everything, just give me the people. But the king of Salem, Melchizedek, the high priest of God, has already come out and reminded Abraham that the battle belongs to the Lord, that it is God who has blessed Abraham, that it is God who delivered him, his enemies, into his hand. And so Abraham follows this pattern. All right, so first Abraham obeys. Second, Abraham worships. We've seen that in the last two uh, narratives. And now Abraham sacrifices. He gives a tenth. He gives a tithe. But uh, I was reading this book um, about disillusionment. And uh, Peter Greer, in his book, um, The Gift of Disillusionment, talks about disillusionment is when we get our eyes on the wrong thing. We put our hope in the wrong thing. We put our hope in possessions. We put our hope in people. We put our hope in uh, politics. We put our hope in positions. Possessions. Oh, man, we've all done this, right? I can't wait. If once I buy this car, I'm going to be so happy. If once I get this house, I'm going to be so happy. And then we all know what happens. Uh, none of those things that provide a, b a brief endorphin uh, rush, but after a while, it's just a car. After a while, it's just a house. We put our uh, hope in people. People disappoint. People make mistakes. People um, fail. Uh, if I could only date her, if I could only marry a guy like him, if I could only... and. Sure enough, people disappoint. Politics, of course, we've lived this cycle. As soon as this person gets into office, everything's going to be better. As soon as this person gets into office, everything's going to be great. And um, time and time again, we're left uh, holding the bag of disappointment because the political system is not the answer. Positions. Oh, if I could just finally get... Uh, this job, if I could finally get this degree, if I could finally arrive um, in this uh, place of prominence. And when we put our hope in the wrong thing, we end up getting disappointed. We end up experiencing disillusionment. 
And so Abraham, rather than put his hope or, or think, wow, I just defeated the king of uh, Sodom and I'm, I'm, I'm awesome now. And look, I get to keep all this stuff for myself. He doesn't do that. He recognizes his hope is in God. God's the one that gave me the victory. And he responds by sacrificial worship. And he responds in humility and says, look, I'm taking nothing for myself so that you can never say that you made me rich because I want it to be known that God has given me the victory. Now, first thing, do you ever take credit for something that God has provided? The other thing is, do you ever put your eyes on things that lead to disillusionment? Because mis misplaced hope will lead to disillusionment. The second thing, and the emphasis for today, is that every victory, every success, every thing of blessing in your life is in and has always been in Christ Jesus. And Paul wants us to open the eyes of our hearts so that we can see this. So here's the good stuff. This is just this amazing stuff. Abraham wins. He's coming back. Now, here's the thing. This is the location of Israel. This is the location of Jerusalem. This is where the Temple Mount is located. All before the temple's ever built, all before David ever makes the sacrifice in order to purchase this, this Temple Mount, all before Jesus ever walks through this valley of Kidron uh, to, to, to the Mount of Olives, all before this ever takes place, Abraham is there. He beats the king of Kedlamar, and now he's won his nephew, Lot, back. Um, the king of Sodom comes out to meet him and to, and to say, Wow, thanks, great job. Uh, you can keep everything and just give me the people. You can keep the possessions. But before that, Melchizedek, all right, Melchizedek, Zedek, righteousness, Melchi, king, king of righteousness, Melchizedek, king of righteousness, king of Salem, he brings out bread and wine. When I say bread and wine in the context of worship or a context of preaching or the context of church, what do you think of? You think of communion. All right, Melchizedek, king of Salem, Jerusalem, the king of Jerusalem. Before it's even Jerusalem. He brings out bread and wine. He is the priest of the God most high, says here in Genesis 14, 18. 14, 19 says, and he blessed Abram. Only the greater can bless the lesser. He blesses Abram. Clearly saying that he's greater than the patriarch Abram. He says, blessed be Abraham. He lays his blessing upon him. Abraham, by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. So he's blessing Abraham in the name of God Most High, creator God. And praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abraham tithes. Only the lesser tithes to the greater. So then there's that thing with Abraham uh, and the king of Sodom where he says, no, I'm not going to take anything that belongs to you. I want it to be known that everything that I have, I've received from God. And God's the one who made me rich, not the king of Sodom. Well, later in Scripture, in, in Psalm 110, which is the most quoted messianic psalm, Melchizedek is answered there that his uh, high priest Melchizedek, his reign would reign forever. Then in Hebrews chapter 7, we also see Melchizedek mentioned again. In Hebrews 7, um, verse 7, it says, This Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God most high. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings, and he blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Then also king of Salem means king of peace. Now watch this, verse 3 of Hebrews chapter 7. 
without father or mother, without genealogy, without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginnings of days or end of life, resembling, and this is a Greek word, a fom, fom, uh, wow, easy for me to say, a foimonos, a foimonos. It's only used one time here in the New Testament. And it means um, we would talk a photocopy. All right. We, we would say a facsimile. We would say a, a, an exact replica resembling the Son of God. He remains a priest forever. And the word there remains priest forever means without interruption. Now think about this for a minute. Melchizedek, he's the priest of Salem, Jerusalem. He's the king of Jerusalem, the king of peace, the king of righteousness. He doesn't have a father or mother. He's without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, just like the Son of God. And he remains high priest without interruption. So when we look at this, it's difficult to comprehend. This is what's called a Christophany, where many theologians, myself included, believe that this is a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus, that Jesus is here and he blesses Abraham. All right, go back. What's the promise? God says to Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to give you the land. I'm going to give you um, um, descendants as numerous as the stars. I'm going to give you seed. You're going to be a nation. And I'm going to bless the world by blessing you. Through you, I'm going to bless the world. So Jesus shows up, King of Salem. Without interruption, this high priesthood is eternal. That Jesus Christ is not going to come in the, the, the priesthood of Aaron, that he comes in the priesthood of Melchizedek. Full circle. This priesthood of Melchizedek reigns without interruption. So from beginning to end, it's always Jesus. Jesus blesses Abraham here so that the blessing that comes through Abraham is Jesus. In other words, every blessing that we have he gives it to Abraham. He says, I'm going to give you a nation, and through your nation is going to come the Messiah. It is Jesus' blessing that turns into the blessing of Jesus. And so everything we've ever got, everything we've ever received is in Christ, in the heavenly realms, before the foundation of the world, before creation itself. It's in Jesus from Jesus, through Jesus, and ultimately back to Jesus. And when we can see that, and when we can lift our hearts and our spirit and be encouraged that Jesus loves us, He's determined to bless us. He's determined to bless us even when we make mistakes and that everything that we have is in Christ. And our hearts well up with gratitude. And we open the eyes of our heart and we begin to see these subtleties and these blessings. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you. And we get our eyes on true hope, which is in Christ, and our eyes off of the things of this world, which just lead to false hope and disillusionment and depression and anxiety and worry and anger and fear and frustration. But when we look and say, everything I have came from Jesus. Jesus, you're the one that opened that door of opportunity. Jesus, you're the one that provided me that relationship that got me into that school. You're the one that blessed me in this way and opened this door of opportunity for this job. And Lord, you're the one that provided me this neighbor. And you're the one that that neighbor knew the contact that would provide me with this surgeon that would help my daughter's healing. You're the one, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And when you live in this way, this attitude of gratitude, of gratefulness of now your eyes are open to see the blessing you want more of that blessing and like Abraham you step out in obedience and you learn when God calls I go 
and I can trust the Lord. He's going to give me the victory. If the Lord takes me into this battle, he has a reason for this battle. And so I go into this battle in obedience. And, and if I'm successful, then I give praise and glory to God. And I worship and I sacrifice and I praise the Lord God, most high creator God, who's chosen me. And I know and believe is going to continue to bless me because his promises are always yes and amen. God is determined to bless you and he's going to bless you in spite of your mistakes. And every blessing that you have is in Christ Jesus. The one that you had yesterday, the one that you're going to experience today, and the one that you will experience tomorrow. So open the eyes of your heart and begin to thought rhyme with God. When you hear God say something, then, then, then respond. If you're here this morning and um, this afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and you never placed your hope in Jesus, every other hope is false hope. And what Scripture teaches is that by placing your faith in Christ, you can receive the hope of Christ, the life that He intended for you, and His blessings you can now experience. They're there waiting for you, but the only way that you can experience is by being in Christ. And so to exchange your life, you simply acknowledge, that, look, I know I'm a sin, Father God, I, I sin. My sin has separated me from you. But you sent Jesus to rescue me, to give me life and to give me hope. And so I exchange my life. I give you my life so that I can receive your life. And by faith, I trust in your son, Jesus. And if you pray that prayer, then just, you can call us at 210-940-0040. Or you can just type in whatever browser or thing you're watching and type in exchange and we will get with you. Show you how you can begin to live this thought rhyme poetry. Begin to live in connection to Jesus. Begin to experience the blessings that Christ has for you. If you're a believer and you've fallen on difficult times or you've uh, fallen away, your sin doesn't get in the way of God's blessings for you. In fact, he's determined to bless you in spite of you. Just open your eyes and put your hope back on Jesus instead of a position or a possession or a person. Get your hopes back on Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, I know every good thing that I have in my life comes from you. And yeah, I've gone through some tough things and they're not it's not a billy club. You beat me up because of my mistakes. You're going to determine to bless me anyway. And so, Lord, I open the eyes of my heart and I pray that you would show me your blessings in my life. I want to walk in them and experience them where you, Lord God, speak. I will step out in faith and obedience and follow you. If you tell me to go and help my neighbor, I'm going to help my neighbor. If you tell me to forgive my enemy, I'm going to forgive my enemy. If you tell me to give him my resources, I'm going to give him my resources. I am going to live in obedience to you and experience your blessing because my hope is for me is in you because all my blessings have always eternally been in you since the foundation of the world he's chosen you and the priesthood that Jesus has is eternal and the blessing of Jesus comes from the blessing of Melchizedek who is the pre-incarnate priest that blessed Abraham and says Abraham I'm going to bless the world through you it's just mind-blowing, the eternal nature of how God is determined to bless you, for you to experience his blessing. If you don't believe that, I pray that your heart will be encouraged. I hope your mind will be blown that God has eternally been pursuing you. He loves you that much. And that everything he has for you is already yours. All you have to do is walk in it. All you have to do is step into it by hearing the Holy Spirit and responding because every blessing, every truly good thing is in Christ. It's not in the world. It's in Him. I hope that that will bless you this holiday weekend. Uh, go in grace and go in peace.